My mother got a simple routine surgery um, December 28, 2018. Uh, she went to the ENT to get her nose cauterized. Um, the doctor told her there would be no side effects in and out within three days or with immediately she felt the effects of the cauterization she couldn't sleep she had suffocation dryness she once explained to me that her nose felt like it had a million little cuts in it um, she went back to the ent he assured her everything was fine um, there was no reason for her to not be sleeping or to have this pain in her nose so he referred her to see a primary doctor. Um, she went from doctor to doctor trying to find out what was going on. She, this was immediately after she got the cauterization that she, she just never slept again. She would maybe sleep 10 minutes a night, half hour, a good night. Um, she would see her primary doctor who would refer her to a therapist who would then refer her to a sleep specialist. They would prescribe anti-anxiety medicine, advise that she had depression or anxiety. Um, that was her cause. They said everything physically was fine with her and she had no reason to not be functioning or to be not sleeping. She had, she was very upset that she felt like they weren't taking her seriously. She felt that the doctors were prescribing her a prescription and wanted to be done with her. Um, she had no faith in actually the medical system because of this. She knew she wasn't feeling this right. I mean, she was 57 years old. She knew something was not right with her body when every doctor told her it had to be depression or anxiety, when she couldn't sleep or breathe. She couldn't breathe properly. She had constant suffocation. What was Dory like prior to this procedure? My mother was very active. She worked two jobs. She would, you know, love spending time with her family. She took our dog for a walk every single day. She um, enjoyed our company, enjoyed making us dinner every day. That was her favorite. I would say that was her favorite time is to cook all of us dinner. My mom is the most loving, caring, best mother in the world. Um, she did everything for my, um, my family, my husband and I, my brother, my dad. She did a lot for us and she, you know, she went from being this happy, caring person to that cooked dinner for us every night and did anything that we asked of her um, to not even being able to enjoy our company because she was so embarrassed and felt so upset in how she like she was embarrassed she didn't want people to see her the way she was um, she was amazing and it it happened so quickly that she was herself and then three months later you know within that short amount of time she changed so drastically how do you think being told by doctors that her issues were psychological impacted her overall she became very depressed she be lost hope that she was ever going to get better as every doctor said there was no issue with her and it had to be all mental so she tried every prescription that they prescribed her and she was actually having a negative reaction. Instead of calming her or making her less anxious, it made her more anxious. Um, I think they must have tr prescribed her like three or four different antidepressants that she just didn't have any luck with them. She was admitted for psychological evaluation? Yes. Can you tell us about that? Um, she went, I believe it was for three days. She, the first night they gave her pills that made her sleep. And that was the first night's sleep she had. I think she slept six hours and it was the first time she continually slept for six hours in two months. And after that, they just fed her pill after pill that she didn't, she wanted to find something to help fix this nose issue. She didn't want to just cover it up with pills and she felt like they weren't helping her. So she did check herself out and 
she didn't find that it was helpful at all. So you, you say that was the first time she slept for six solid hours in yeah. two months? Yep. Yeah. yeah, she, I mean, since she had her nose cauterized December 28th, she never slept a full night's sleep. What were her main symptoms? Shortness of breath, suffocation, trouble breathing, trouble sleeping, um, lap, lack of appetite. She just became very different, not the mom that I grew up with. She would distance herself and isolate herself from us because she didn't want us to know what was actually going on. She um, was in so much pain and suffering every single day, but she faked it like things were okay when really they weren't. Um, I, we did get to see, she lived with my husband and I, so we did get to see firsthand how this cauterization of her nose, it affected her daily life ever since that. Did she feel hopeless? What do you believe played a major part in that hopelessness? Um, the dismissal from the doctors. She felt like no one was taking her seriously. Um, unfortunately, she did tell my husband and I that she didn't feel right and we we didn't know about empty nose syndrome. So there was no guidance for us to even, like I didn't even know that was a thing. I thought maybe she is anxious and hopefully if she takes this pill, it will help her, but it, it didn't have that effect on her. Um, she was disappointed that the doctors seemed to pass her off, prescribe her a pill and then, oh, maybe you need to see this therapist or maybe you need to get um, a sleep study or maybe you need to exercise more. They suggested things that she couldn't even, I mean, how was she supposed to exercise when she couldn't even get to bed? How is she supposed to have the energy to go for a run or a walk when she's not sleeping? What, what treatments did your mom try to alleviate her symptoms that you know of? Um, that I know of, my mom, every recommendation by the doctor, she tried every pill that they gave her. You know, they told her to meditate, they told her to exercise. She tried, you know, every over-the-counter saline solution up her nose, cotton ball up her nose, a humidifier, um, any option that she saw, she tried. Kind of hard to meditate when you can't breathe, right. isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to do a lot of things when you can't sleep. Right. I mean, I don't under, I know just from having a newborn baby, the lack of sleep can cause so much issues. If you're not getting asleep, you know, even the sanest person would go crazy without sleep. So how did your mom come across empty nose syndrome? My mom knew something was not right and it started with the cauterization. She looked for answers when she felt like she wasn't getting specific uh, answers to her questions from the doctors. She Googled and researched herself um, she stumbled across it, I believe, on Google. You know, she constantly was not sleeping, so she was up all night trying to figure out what could be going on with her. Um, I think she just typed in her symptoms and stumbled upon it on the internet. In all of the doctors that she had seen, was there at least one doctor who um, understood that she had empty nose syndrome? There was one doctor that she was scheduled to actually fly to Los Angeles to, to have um, a surgery done with that did say that she had um, all the symptoms of empty nose syndrome. So she was Planning to see this doctor for a procedure prior to, to her passing, she never made it there. Um, was there something that happened that made her lose hope? Yes, we found her phone the day she died and we found that there was a call made to the um, doctor in LA and um, the nurse, I believe, um, told her that the surgery may help, but it's not gonna solve every issue and she may never be 100% again. 
She was spending, you know, every last penny she had to fly to LA. She was supposed to stay there. She had to get there three days before surgery and stay a week after surgery. So she had to pay for, you know, an Ubers to and from the airport, a hotel for a week and a half, plus the surgery as it wasn't completely covered by insurance. And then to get that call from the surgery coordinator or the nurse to say, you know, this may solve your problem, but it also may not. So the possibility of it not helping her, she lost complete hope. And that's when she decided to end her life. Do you think time plays a critical role in victims' experiences with the NS? Time, I mean, my, it, it took three months, that's all. In that time frame, my mom went from a caring, loving, happy person to her life changing dramatically to her ending her life. So she didn't have time to waste or time to wait. You know, she was supposed to see a sleep specialist, but they couldn't get her in. She didn't have, they said we can get her in next month because he was so booked up. She didn't have a month to wait. Do you think doctors in the medical community failed your mom? Yes. I think if you, you know, the ENT that um, cauterized her nose, she went back five or six times between December 28th and March. I mean, if a doc, if a patient is pleading with you that something is wrong, and even if you don't know what's going on, I think you need to show compassion. And I think you need to be um, sympathetic for that patient. And she just never received that from the doctors. You know, they all told her it was inside her head and she had to deal with the depression and anxiety. But what they didn't realize that it was the nose causing this. What do you think could have helped her? I think full disclosure from her doctor um, before she had this simple rot routine procedure as what the doctor called it. Um, you know, she was told there were no risks associated with it. So I think if the doctor let her know up front that this is a side effect, then she wouldn't have gotten um, the surgery and she would still be with us today. Do you want to talk a little bit about today? Today you have a, a, a new baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, my mom passed a month before I had my first son. And, you know, I just feel like if she held on for one more month, she, you know, my son would bring her so much joy like he brings me. Um, it's hard losing a parent when you're becoming one. And, you know, I miss her every day. And it, it's heartbreaking that my son won't know his grandmother. So what would you like to say to people um, contemplating the, any of these nasal procedures, whether it be cauterization or sinus surgeries, anything that involves the turbinates? Do your research. I, I mean, I didn't know about ENS until my mom, until my mom's situation and what we're going through and what my family's going through is devastating. And if there's a chance for more people to become educated about the risk of nasal surgery. Um, I hope people will think twice before getting it. You know, once you do get the surgery, there is no going back. You can't rebuild the terminants in your nose, and once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs>